So, you're thinking about leaving Apple's ecosystem. As someone that just a short time ago owned a 16 inch MacBook Pro, an Apple Watch Series 7, and an iPhone 13 Pro, how did I manage to escape Apple's blissful ecosystem? Let's talk about that. I get tons of comments asking me to make this video and I'm assuming it's because some of you want to switch to an S22 Ultra, a Pixel 7 Pro, or even like a nothing phone one. I get it, I was in your shoes. You're paying $15 a month for Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, and your iCloud storage. You're stuck using iMessage because your friends have it and you don't want to feel left out. You're invested in MagSafe accessories to make your life just a little bit easier. And you have universal control, AirDrop, AirPods, AirThis, AirPlay, AirThat. I understand, but does any of that actually matter? From the second that I saw the S22 Ultra, something switched. The screen to body ratio, the lack of a notch, the sleekness of a phone. It just instantly made my 13 Pro feel outdated. Tech moves quite fast and I like tech. That's why I made this channel. Get subscribed by the way. I just wanted to give this phone a try and see what it was like before it was too late. I knew that it would be an adjustment and that I'd have to make some changes, but I didn't know how drastic those changes would be. Or were they? Like yeah, not having iMessage and FaceTime kind of sucks, but those are the only things I actually miss. And I don't actually feel like I find myself missing out because we have apps like WhatsApp and Snapchat if I need to video call or connect with some of my friends. Plus, none of my friends use their phone anyway. They're all using Discord. So it's like nothing really changed in terms of the social connectivity. Soon after I bought the S22 Ultra, I returned my MacBook and I sold my Apple Watch. I built a pretty overkill for my need computer with the return money that I got from the MacBook. I got an i9-12900K, a 3070Ti, three terabytes of SSD storage, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory. It's just been an absolute beast. Yeah, it's a little less portable for sure. And I think you're probably thinking I could have just bought a Mac Studio, but I can do more on this. See, the thing is, I'm not limited by Apple Silicon and what these new processors can handle. It's a PC. I can play games. I can edit all of my videos like I had been doing no problem. And at the end of the day, it just makes more sense for me. All of my friends own gaming computers, so we're always in Discord talking to each other. And if I had a Mac still, that's where I feel like I'd be left out. The second that I bought the Mac, I somewhat regretted it because it was holding me back from being able to communicate with them just sort of any time throughout the day. But if I go on my computer right now, I can just hop into Discord and talk to them. And yeah, I can use Discord on a MacBook, but I won't feel included. I won't be able to play the games that they're playing. And before you go crazy on me, I understand the Mac Studio can play some games, but for the price, it's not the best experience and you definitely can't play every game because of the ARM translation. So let's just clear the air there. I understand the Mac Studio is a really good computer, but it's not for me. And I sort of felt this way about the iPhone. Yes, it's the fastest phone that you can buy. Yes, you can play games at 120 Hertz and it feels extremely responsive. The phone is like super cool to the touch all the time. It's just extremely reliable, but iOS, I just feel limited by it. You know, it's like they make the best phone, the best hardware, and a lot of that is because of iOS and their optimization, but they take away so much from the user. And I understand when you buy a smartphone, you want a phone that's gonna work regardless. You want a phone that you can trust. But when you're paying over $1,000 for a smartphone, I want something that I'm able to customize and work with and build around my life. You know, I, I don't want to have to work around the phone. It just, it doesn't make any sense. I think the coolest thing Apple's done in the longest time is the customization of the lock screen now. But even then, that's like the only way to personalize an iPhone is just 
to put your clock a little bit behind the image and change the colors. I, I don't know, man. You know, for that thousand dollars, it's like, why not buy something that you can customize and fully enjoy? Or even buy something that has features that you can use to utilize more throughout your day to day, like a foldable phone or like an S Pen. Oh. See, I started writing this video with the intent to tell you how hard it was to switch from Apple's ecosystem because at one point, I honestly felt trapped. And as I sat there writing this script, I realized that it was way easier than I thought. Things like my iCloud got replaced by Google Photos or Google Drive. My AirPods switched to Galaxy Buds 2 and for all of my MagSafe accessories, well, I just ordered a Pataka case. So if you want to see a video about that, let me know. Now, it may sound like I just left one ecosystem and then got tightly wrapped up by another. And I can see your point, but Google and Samsung are just more open. Like every time I take a photo on my phone, it just goes straight to Google Photos and I can access it from my computer without having to log into iCloud and download it. And when it comes to like file formats and stuff, everything's easier to work with. If I need to pull some data off of my phone, I can just simply plug it into USB-C and access it without iTunes. There's just so many things that make it easier to use. So when it comes to things like Google Photos or Google Drive or whatever, I don't really mind using them because they're easier to use. When it comes to iCloud, like I said, I felt like it was such a pain in the ass to be able to get anything off of iCloud or use your iCloud Drive without having a MacBook or any sort of Apple device. It's like they make it intentionally harder on Windows to try to get you to move over and lock you into this ecosystem. You know, and the other thing is when it comes to my Google account, I already use a Google account for my YouTube channel, so I'm always logged into it. So whatever I access, like my Gmail or my Google Drive, my Google Photos, it's just a click away without having to enter all of my login information use my two factor every second, every time I need to get my iCloud code. If you guys know what I'm talking about, it's just all there and it's just super easy. The AirPods Pros that I had worked fine with my S22 Ultra. And to be honest, I didn't need to buy Galaxy Buds 2, but I did because of how feature rich they are and also the fact that they charge over USB-C. So it just makes my life a little bit easier only using one cable. Now, the funny thing about the Galaxy Buds 2 is you can pretty much get them for free or for pennies compared to AirPods because they're always on sale and Samsung will literally just give them out to you for buying one of their phones like half of the year. It's ridiculous. Like you can probably go on Samsung's website right now and get a free pair if you buy a phone. Or if you had bought a phone from Samsung or the Galaxy Experience stores, you can just go on Samsung members and claim it. Like it's actually ridiculous that they just hand it out to you because they are actually really good. I'm surprised they don't get as much love as something like AirPods because they genuinely are very similar to the AirPods Pros. So if you're looking for a Samsung or Android alternative to AirPods, you don't need to, but if you want to, the Galaxy Buds 2 are perfectly fine. Like, to be honest with you, the most annoying thing about switching to Android was probably just explaining to my mom that my texts were gonna show up as green for her. It's like she couldn't comprehend why her text message chain with me wasn't a blue message. Everything else, honestly, has been fine. Look, despite how you may be feeling about me or how I've been pushing this phone on my YouTube channel, I actually do like iPhone. I just wanted something new and exciting. Like I said, I play around with tech all the time and it's just interesting to me. Having said that though, ever since I actually picked up the S22 Ultra, I've used my phone a lot more. The iPhone would just stay living in my pocket or face down on my desk when I'm home. I actually look for excuses and reasons to use this because of how beautiful the display is, because of how fun the cameras are to play with, because of how sleek and nice this phone is in your hand. There's something about it that's actually made me use it, which is nice when you're spending almost 2000 Canadian dollars on a phone, you probably want to use it. The iPhone that I had, like I said, just kind of sat there and it felt like my money was being burned and taunting me every second of the day. If you're thinking about leaving the Apple ecosystem, I would give it a shot if you're not heavily invested. 
If you own an iPad, iMac, MacBook, Apple TV, iPhone, whatever, it's probably not the best idea just because the iPhone is pretty much the heart of the ecosystem and without it, you'll lose a lot of features on those devices that will no longer be available to you if you had something like a Samsung phone. But if you just have like a MacBook, for example, and don't really care about texting from it or an iPad, who cares? right? The MacBook will still function as a laptop, the iPad will still function as an iPad, and they're still the best tablets and laptops that you can buy. So don't feel like you have to force yourself to using an iPhone just because you own one. Like there's literally almost no other alternative for it. There's some of the coolest, quiet, like most powerful machines that you can buy. So if you're okay with just giving up some of those small features like texting and FaceTime from them, or even AirDrop, I would say go for it. But if you have the means, I would actually recommend buying one off of say Amazon or some retailer that has a pretty lengthy and reasonable return policy. Because if you can afford to buy the phone outright, I would buy it outright and try it out within your life just to see whether you can actually handle, you know, the lack of these features or not. If you decide within 30 days that, you know, you're too heavily invested in Apple or Maybe this phone isn't what you thought or vice versa. I, I don't know. At least you'll be able to return the phone and you won't be locked into like a two year contract and you'll know your mind will be at ease. That's the one thing for me is like every time I get some of these ideas when it comes to tech, my mind just keeps racing until I do it. And then sometimes when I do it, I realize that was a really stupid decision. Like when I bought the Fold 3. Although the Fold 3 was a really cool phone, at the time I was working in a really you know, a really dirty, heavy, like industrial job. And that phone, God forbid, if I had anything on my fingers, the screen would just get completely destroyed. So the Fold 3 wasn't a good idea. But I haven't had that feeling with the Samsung yet, and it's been like three months. So this phone is pretty good in my book. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and just you know, show your support. I don't know. The channel has been doing extremely well and I've never actually had a moment to sit down and talk to you guys like this. I just want to say thank you for 1500 subscribers. It's actually ridiculous what you have been doing to, you know, continue to watch support and just be there for this channel. It really means a lot. I actually went through a really difficult time about a week ago. Um, I had my first seizure and I'm not able to drive or work right now until we figure out exactly why it happened. And as we do these tests, you know, sometimes in my head, it just gets a little bit more worrying because I have to worry about whether or not now I have epilepsy or just whether it was a fluke. And I thank God that I'm a YouTube partner now and that I have this platform to be able to make videos and, and share my experience about some things with you guys because not only does it give me something to do, but believe me, it actually helps put a little bit of something in my pocket. And while I don't make YouTube videos for the money right now, is definitely going to be a trying time for me to see what exactly is going on um, when it comes to like being on disability and being home and unable to work. So I don't know. Thank you for the support that you've shown. If you want to go ahead, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Valley's Mind. I'll follow you guys back. Anyone that follows me on Twitter and I'll be there for you. You know, I'll talk to you. I'll hang out. We'll, we'll chat. Just DM me. Um, thank you for watching and peace out.